Hi there folks, I'm Jeff Forster. I'm the head of the ceramics department at the Glass Hell School of Art. It's the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston's studio school where both University of St. Thomas students and mostly adults take classes. And so, if you're watching this video, chances are that you found one of these little baggies out in the community somewhere in Kingwood and are interested in participating in a socially distant dirt project. And so when we got put into quarantine and our self-isolation system as it is, I started thinking about ways I might be able to engage the community here in Kingwood in a positive way. And so naturally, being a ceramist, my mind went there and the interesting thing is ceramics has such a long history of involving the community and I do a wood firing process predominantly and that's very much I rely on a community of friends and people to help out with that process. There is typically 10 to 15 people who take turns for 24-7 for a duration of three and a half days stoking a fire to fire our pots or sculptures and then Functional pottery, of course, being geared for serving and eating, libations, and that idea of community and gathering around a table. So, the reason I ask you to watch the video is so I can show you what you're going to do with these things once you find them. So, I'm going to take this piece of clay out of the baggie, and the first thing I want to do, and this is just a very simple pinch pot process, and you're welcome to view any other videos on my YouTube channel. I've got uh, how to build with coils for beginners and a number of other things. So you're welcome to really build or sculpt anything you like out of this piece of clay. And the idea is that I will give you an email address and my poem address. And once you build something, you're going to let it dry out and we will arrange a time for you to drop that off in my driveway, being socially distant, of course, and I'm going to go ahead and get these things fired in a kiln for you, and then you can take them, you'll come back and pick it up, take it home, and you can paint it how you like. So when, once the clay is fired, it's pretty durable and accepting of just about any kind of paint. It doesn't have to be a fired on ceramic surface, so you could just use acrylic paints or even temper paints potentially, though you may want to prime the clay first if you're going to do that. I've used enamels in the past, even fingernail polish. So really you could decorate a fired pot in any number of ways and doesn't necessarily require a kiln. And so the earliest and probably simplest method of forming pots, like I said, is pinching. So basically I've just taken my hands, cupped them, and turned this into a ball just by moving it around and kind of patting it. And once I have a sphere, I'm going to actually just rest that on my fingers. I'm right-handed, so I've got that in my right hand, my thumbs on top, and my left hand is just going to spin this ball as I apply pressure pinching down. Right, so I'm sort of pinching up from the bottom with my fingers and I'm pinching down with my thumb to open that up. Alright, and I'm really shooting for like, let's say a quarter inch thickness, although there's a little bit of wiggle room and leeway in that dimension. That doesn't have to be exact. Like quarter inch to three eighth though is pretty typical. So, once I've got this thing opened up, right, and I've got probably 3 8 inch of clay in the, in the bottom right here, and I've still got really thick walls. And so what I'll do is bring my hand to the outside, continue to turn this, and start pinching the walls. And so I'm not only opening this up more during this process, but I'm also thinning the walls at the same time, right? 
You can see I've got a canvas down on my table. You could put newspaper down or even a, if you get a garbage bag and cut the edges and open it up, you could lay a piece of plastic over a table to help keep the mess contained. As beautiful as it's been outside for April and May in Houston, you could sit on a back patio and do this, contain your mess. I would suggest though that if you're doing this at home, when you go to wash your hands, maybe rinse them off with a garden hose or in a bucket of water before going to your sink because you don't want a bunch of clay debris going down your drain. So I can just pinch, pinch, pinch and you can, I continue to turn this as I pinch it. And by doing so, I can keep it relatively symmetrical and shooting for like a, a pretty consistent thickness in my walls. So if you're, if you're still with me and viewing this video, you can set up a time to drop off your finished pieces and it may take me a little while to collect them all and make sure that they're all dry to the point where I can fire them so there could be a, a couple week turnaround before you get your pot back but what you'll want to do to set up that delivery is email me and my email address is simply my first initial last name so J Forster F O R S T E R at M F A H dot org that's the Museum of Fine Arts Houston abbreviation and once I get your email <coughs> I'll get you my address rather not post that onto YouTube where it's open to the public. I might have people from as far away as other countries showing up at my front porch, right? I don't want that. <clears throat> so, really important is that once you're done with your pot, or small sculpture. I could see some kids finding these things and wanting just to model like a dinosaur or a frog or a bird or what have you. I'm really just offering the pinch pot as a suggestion. But the most important thing, regardless of what you decide to make, is that you'll want to etch your name into your piece somewhere or even a message so, something to make it identifiable because when you come back to pick it up chances are there's going to be 50 small objects and if people are all making pinch pots it's going to be really hard to determine who's are whose is whose when you come back it's amazing once things come out of a firing how similar they look until the glaze is applied and they're refired or they're unless of course they're decorated in such a unique way that they're easily distinguishable one of the nice things about clay is if you try one and it doesn't work out provided it doesn't take too long to build turn this back into a ball, very malleable material, and try again. Now, on that note, I hope that you enjoy building with your clay. I will look forward to hearing from you on my email if you're interested in having things fired. I'm doing that free of charge. And just remember, life is good. <laughs>